<clears throat> well, hello, everybody. Um, I just want to check in, see how everyone's doing. Um, but I want to talk to you today about something really important. Um, it's about disciplining your mind and your body and your spirit. At the Amen Clinics, we talk about four circles, biological, psychological, social, and spiritual. Um, and it's, it's just, it's become, the past three months, it's become more and more challenging to initiate this discipline, uh, you know, over ourselves and our thoughts and our thinking and, and our lifestyle. Um, we've just been taking hits one after another. So for the past three months, it's like one thing after another. We've had COVID, we've had quarantine. Many of us, including in our family, have experienced deaths in the family during this time, which has been really challenging, or the loss of a family, um, not just loss of a family member, but the loss of a job or income. Um, so many things that have just brought about trauma. And most people in their lifetime, most of us, if you're my age, you've experienced some kind of trauma in your life. And if you haven't, most of us will at some stage. Most people experience some sort of emotional trauma, but this feels like it's on steroids. So we go through COVID and now it feels like the world is burning. Um, you know, we just, we, we are just bombarded with so much pain and negativity as a society. And more than ever, it, it's gonna require discipline on our part if we wanna be in the solution. If you want to be in the solution and help fix things, you can't succumb to it. Just like if you had a disease, you need to fight for your health. Well, right now we need to fight for the health of our body, minds, and spirits if we're going to be solution oriented and help people overcome, help our society overcome what's going on. Um, I don't know about you, but it feels like I've been in the middle of a bad movie for a long time and you just can't seem to, it's not ending. It's just going on and on and on. And some, at some point it became an edge of your seat thriller and you're like, but it's my, it's our lives. It's our society and it's difficult. And so let me talk to you for a minute about the four circles. So the psychological circle, my husband and I both went to colleges that promoted mind, body, and spirit, not just medicating people, uh, but mind, body, and spirit. Um, I went to a Christian college where they talked about this constantly. If you don't treat the whole person, you're not treating them at all, essentially. Um, so our minds, um, you know, if we, if we think of the psychology of what's going on, it's just so incredibly difficult to deal with what's happening right now because we're being bombarded by negative messages 24 seven, death tolls, and then rioting, and then, you know, videos being played of, and it's, it's tragic. So much of what's happening is truly tragic, but we must discipline ourselves not to let that be the narrative of our life, but rather to be the, a problem to be solved. And I know that's not easy when you're in pain, but it's critical. And as somebody who has actually been through a lot of trauma in my life, I actually just finished writing my book, The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. And it's how persistence, grit, and faith created a reluctant healer. And I really do believe that that persistence, grit, and faith, faith above all for me, um, is, what, is what's gonna make the difference. And I, I feel like we're bankrupt in these four circles at the moment. Um, so that's the psychology is what, what are you, what's in your mind? What are you filling your mind with? What are the negative thoughts or the positive thoughts that you are allowing to be the narrative of your life and your thoughts? We talk about it all the time. My husband and I, in our podcast, the brain warriors way podcast, we talk about how your thoughts lie. They lie a lot. And if you allow them to those negative thoughts, those ants, automatic negative thoughts to dominate your life, it's going to ruin the quality of your life and you can't be in the solution. But what surprises people is there's the biology, right? So people don't really think about this, but everything you do, every thought you think, everything you eat, the way you sleep, whether you're sleeping or not, the, the, the messages you hear on television, they are either increasing or decreasing your stress hormones. So and people don't think about that. They don't think about, well, if I eat bad food, if I eat a lot of sugar, I'm increasing cortisol. I'm increasing the stress hormone that makes me actually feel stress. If I eat bad foods that are, that are really bad for me, I'm actually damaging my gut. And if your gut isn't healthy, it actually creates anxiety and depression and exacerbates it tremendously. Um, and so people are a little confused when they come to see us that we actually work on your nutrition and your sleep and your supplements and exercise pretty much above everything. We need to get you back on track and not just put band-aids over bullet holes. 
by treating people. So everything you eat is affecting you. But when you're not, when you're watching negative messages all day and you don't discipline yourself to turn off the television, get up, go for a walk, or in my case, I'm in my, my home gym right now, work out. You've got to discipline yourself to do that. Because if you don't, not exercising increases stress hormones, not which both of those will then, so if you're eating poorly and you're not exercising and you're watching, and then on top of that, watching negative messages all day, you're not going to sleep. That increases stress hormones. You're more likely to not only become sick. I mean, we still have COVID going around, whether you would never know it by turning on the television, but you're going to be more susceptible to diseases, but you're also going to be more susceptible to internal pain, to anxiety and depression. And you're not going to be able to help anybody if you give in to that, if you give in to that lack of discipline in your life. And I'm not saying it's easy. I've been there. I've actually wanted to die. So when people say, you don't know what I'm going through, I don't know what you're going through right now. None of us can know what the other person's going through. I do know what it's like to feel completely hopeless. And that's why I'm so passionate about this right now. Why it's so important that we discipline ourselves. Um, the social circle. So we have a social circle, one of the four circles. And that is, who are you spending time with? Because the quality of the people that you spend time with will determine your, how many things in your life, the outcome, because people are contagious. And so are you, you know, for many people, this was really challenging because their church home is their, that's their social circle and that was shut down. And so we saw all kinds of people going into depression because of that. And there's, you know, there's so many, but if people who go to AA, they rely on that, that was shut down. Um, but if you're going to, if you're an alcoholic and you're trying to be, you know, a recovered alcoholic and you're hanging out at a bar, good luck with that. Well, the same holds true. If you're trying to keep a really positive mental attitude, but all you're doing is watching negative messages all day long. And I get more than anybody. I get how challenging that can be because I get angry like anybody else when I turn on the television. So for me, the solution has to be shutting off the television, going for a walk, exercising, making sure I'm eating healthy and then the spiritual circle, which is just as important. The spiritual circle is critical because purposeful people live 11 years longer. They're happier, they're more stable, and they do more good in the world. I'm not saying you have to believe the way we believe. I'm not saying you have to, you know, do what we're saying, like what our belief system, but you need something to believe in that's bigger than yourself if you want to do something amazing on the planet. And people who are able to turn their pain into purpose instead of pain into destruction. That is critical if you want to elicit change. If you want people to listen to you and you want to elicit change, you've got to be able to turn the pain into purpose. I mean, I think Martin Luther King was a perfect example of that, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, these are people that turned pain into purpose, not destruction and not pain and violence, not more pain. And so I just, I, I implore you, I just, it's so critical that we start thinking about the spiritual circle, turning our pain to purpose. How can we be better? How can we make a difference? Why is the world a better place? Because you're in it, which basically means how, what can you do to take responsibility for the way things are in our society? How can you be helpful and in the solution instead of in the problem? And um, one saying we have in our house that I love is, um, we focus on this question, does it have eternal value? And if it doesn't have eternal value, meaning if it's something petty that happens that upsets someone in the house, and it's something we're not gonna think about five years from now, or even five days from now, or five weeks from now, then it's not important to focus on. That is not where our energy needs to go. Things that make us angry and violent, or feel that violence is not where our energy needs to be. It needs to be focused on being purposeful, helping to make a change, make a difference in some kind of a positive way and bringing that same healing to other people. And so as someone who I, as I said, grew up in a very traumatic environment, um, it was tough. There were times that were I wanted to die at one point. I just didn't think the world was worth living in. And many people are feeling that way right now. It's just so out of control in their minds, they can't wrap their minds around what's happening. And rightfully so, it's, it's confusing. But if we can all take a step back, discipline our thoughts, discipline our minds, discipline our bodies, so that we can bring down biologically, bring down that stress response, which then helps us step into a more purposeful state.
And I, it's just, it's never been more important. I'm not gonna talk about what ha what's happening because everyone's got an opinion about what's happening right now. That's not where I want to bring our attention. I just want to, wherever you are, wherever your attention is, please put it in a purposeful state of healing so you can help other people rather than and help our society and your community as opposed to creating more destruction. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and I've said this before and people don't really understand what I mean, but everything you put on the end of your fork matters. Your food matters. Everything you listen to on television or that matters. The people you hang out with, it matters. All of that matters in creating your overall state of well-being or disharmony and dysfunction. So you're either fueling the fire or you're helping yourself. And so more than ever, we really need discipline in our lives in those four circles. And I hope that you will join me in doing that and creating some, some harmony, some sort of peace in the world at the moment um, in whatever way you can. I mean, for me, you know, for us, our platform is our clinics and being able to help people. By the way, calls to suicide, suicide hotlines are up a thousand percent. That's how hopeless people feel. We are slammed at the clinics with visits to our doctors, televisits, you know, Zoom visits, um, even in-person visits again, because people just feel so hopeless. And that's just not going to help any of us if we can't get back on track as a society. We're running out of Zoloft. We are actually out of Zoloft. It's become a critical drug. So we, it's clear that we are just feeling, each of us are feeling somewhat bankrupt, if you will. So I hope that you will join me and turn off the TV, go for a walk. I'm not saying don't know what's happening, know what's happening in your neighborhood, know what the headlines are, but maybe if you are a praying person, pray. If you are a meditating person, meditate. But focus on something positive and healing so you can help heal your family and then maybe your society, your community. Thank you. Have a great day. Please post what you're doing um, to be in the solution. I know a lot of you are hurting. That's okay. You can post that too. But I hope that you will post what you are doing, the positive things you are doing to help elicit change. How are you keeping your family healthy? How are you empowering the people, the kids, your husband, your spouse, your wife, how are you empowering the people in your family to stay healthy and strong? Because right now we need warriors more than we've ever needed warriors. Warriors are aware, prepared, and armed for, for what's happening in their world. And so just please be, be those things. So thank you so much. Have a great day.